your unique story our global audience global one media welcome to global one media stocks to watch i'm michael suido joining me today is julian davy he's the president and ceo of tarku resources they're a mining exploration company that's listed on canada's tsx venture exchange they're also listed in frankfurt and the company stock is traded over the counter in the united states julian thanks for joining us today it's a pleasure to be here, Michael. So in addition to running a multi-million dollar company, Julian, you're also an experienced geologist. So I'm curious, when you're looking at a new site, at a new mining exploration project, how do you decide whether you're likely to strike gold, pardon the pun? That's a good question. Uh, the project has to usually has to fit with the company uh, and the team uh, you have in place. Um, every decision is different. Uh, usually, the the location comes early in the decision process. Um, with the location, we have information on the access, for example, and we have a good idea usually on the the, the geology uh, before going on the ground. Um, there are lots of variables, as you know, uh, but we don't usually limit ourselves to gold only, for example. We don't look only for a particular mineralization. Um, we are a junior exploration company, so we are focusing on doing discoveries, um, and we are looking at uh, different mineralization that could be find, found in a specific location. Um, we are we like to look at overlooked area, meaning that area that has already a mining history, uh, but that has not been worked for a long time, for in the 80s or in the 90s, for example. And we have there a, a, tons, uh, a ton of information uh, already in place. And we are able to see if there is a potential for another type of mineralization that has not been tested. There are numerous examples of that because knowledge and, and the understanding of the mineralization processes are evolving through times. All right, that's interesting. You use a term which I think a lot of listeners may not know, which is mineralization. So that's the types of geological deposits that are going to indicate it as a good site. Now, mining exploration is a tough business. Some would say it always has been. After all, if uh, gold and silver were easy to dig up, we'd all be doing it all the time. Uh, from what I understand, your company focuses on areas that have strong geologic potential. So how do you determine this? How can you, can you tell which site is the most promising? That's a, a tough question also, uh, because there is a wide variety of deposits uh, in the world. Uh, we are looking for um, uh, for area that has the, the potential, as you were mentioning. And the deposits are a consequence of of a certain geological history that happened at a specific place. Um, if, if we are in an in a ocean floor where, where we can have the formation of a massive sulfide deposit, for example, or are we in on the top of, of the a range of a mountain range where we have porphyry style deposit or a 10 kilometer deep in the crusts, uh, in the earth crusts, where we can have the formation of iron formation deposits, for example. So, for example, so to put it simply, almost any rock can be uh, of interest. It's really it's subsequent event that take place that makes the difference. If I quickly take the example of uh, our Matagami area, where we have our three A's project, we are in the Abitibi region there. That's a region with 2.7 million years of geological history. At that time, there were we were in the Archean. The continental crust already exists, and we had a lot of volcanic activity. Uh, uh, that intense volcanic activity created what we call the, the Canadian Shield, within which the, the Abitibi region is. Uh, and to make a very long story, uh, story short, uh, the under the, the plate tectonic forces, the, that Canadian Shield dismembered separate into different blocks and after reconstitute into new crusts uh, during successive collisions. And under, you can imagine those enormous pressure, the earth crust move, creating faults, folds, breaks, 
and that pressure and the heat associated with these impacts release the fluids and the precious metals, uh, like as you were mentioning, uh, gold or copper or zinc, and deposit them in areas more favorable to receive them. We call these traps. And our job is to understand these processes and to find those traps where we have, uh, that's what we, 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 we've done, for example, uh, with our last drill program on the three A's in metagamy by drilling at specific geophysical anomalies that, we, that looks like traps. I feel like we're getting a masterclass in geology here. This is excellent. Thank you so much. I want to zoom in on one of your other projects. Um, but first, just a note, I understand your company takes what you call an unconventional approach, an unconventional perspective on mineralization. So if we look at the Silver Strike project in Arizona, uh, people have been mining silver there for, what, 150 years. What is it about your approach that's different? That's a, a good question. Uh, we, th that region produced about 32 million ounces of silver, but people were looking at a really specific area on their own claims. Nobody really looked at with a district scale uh, uh, overview and picture. There we are on the south south uh, west of the continent where we are, we are in the porphyry uh, uh, area with what we call the elephant country for porphyry style mineralization. There we are looking at injection through the crust uh, of mineralized uh, rich dikes uh, related to that porphyry. It's a really young uh, uh, in terms, if we compare to the ABTB region, it's really younger uh, in terms of history. And by looking at th those um, uh, dikes, we are able to understand with the diff with the, the the airborne survey we've conducted in 2022, the geophysical uh, airborne survey. We were able to understand that there are many other anomalies untested and unexplored even yet uh, uh, a little bit further uh, than the historical area. So by taking a little bit uh, step backward and look at the the project. As, a, as in whole, we could have a really interesting big project uh, at the district scale level here. Your company, Julian, combines its uh, geological expertise, which you've been walking us through, with data science. And you do that to try and reduce the uncertainty around mining projects. Tell us, how does this work? That's another good question. Um, it's data is the, the, the hard the core of any exploration company. You have to understand what you're looking for. If I take another example of, of one of our project uh, for the lithium project in, the, uh, in ABTB region, for example, we're talking here about spodumene bearing, uh, bearing uh, pegmatites. You have to understand it's a different uh, environment than the gold uh, project. You don't have to look at the same type of rocks. Uh, there we are in a magmatic system. Uh, we are at several kilometers deep at the apex of intrusions, and you have to understand the cooling process that it takes a lot of time, and that cooling process is crucial, for example. Um, you can imagine that we are at, at kilometer deep. Uh, it takes hundreds of thousands of years to cool down, and this is what we are calling fractionation. Uh, the, the minerals that form at higher temperature are the first to appear, uh, usually at the bottom of the system, and the ones that forms at lower temperature form usually after and uh, uh, more at the top of the system. Uh, the spodumene that we're looking for here, which is the, the lithium-rich mineral, form late in the process and between 700 and 500 degrees Celsius. So a million years after, because of the, the erosion, that same system that was deep into the crust is now on surface and doing our exploration. If you understand the process, you're able to position yourself uh, looking at the minerals you, you, you can see. So it's a question of experience and understanding where you are. So I want to bring the discussion now from geology and data to investing. Mining is generally seen to be a cyclical industry, it fluctuates with the global economy, with other factors like, say, the war in Ukraine. As an investor, 
what factors do you think I need to take into account when assessing and valuing an exploration project or an exploration company? This is a decision uh, that the investor has to take as a whole. Uh, you mentioned war in Ukraine, you mentioned project. Uh, we talk about the project, that's one aspect. That's the that's the uh, the DNA of a junior company. Uh, on, an, on a project, on an asset, you could put a certain value, but the team is also something really important. And because they are the one that apply the right strategy on your project. Uh, having the the experience that we have, for example, at Tarku, I'm really fortunate to say that we have a variety of experience, both on the, the board of directors, uh, and then uh, with the team of geologists uh, that we are using and geoscientists that we are using. W when we are working on a project, we are using specific consultants, geologists, and, and geoscience, depending on the, the environment we are looking for. It's crucial to understand the environment again where you're working on. If I'm if I'm not the one that's going to do the, the job, I'm, we're going to find the the right geologist to work in Arizona or in in the ABTV region where we are. That's that's how that's our our approach. Julian, thank you so much. I, I think if there's one thing that I'm taking away from today's discussion is that you want a mining exploration company that has strong roots and an incredibly strong grasp of the geology as well as the economics of mining. So Julian Davi. President, CEO, and geologist at Tarku Resources. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. It was a pleasure to be here also, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. You've been watching Global One Media's Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Swider.